If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. And if you really like the video, subscribe to the channel because that is what helps me out the most. Also, when you sub, hit that notification bell. That way you get updated when I drop the newest content like this. The topic at hand is Rydell Booker. Why Rydell Booker? Because me and Julius, a.k.a. Ring IQ, we was talking about Jermaine Franklin. He was saying he didn't think he looked good. I was like, he looks promising. And Rydell Booker came up. And I figured, why not make a video about Rydell Booker? Not a lot of people know about him. He was a great prospect. So let's get into it. Rydell Booker was born February 17th in 1981 in Detroit, Michigan, which makes him 39 today. He had some major achievements in the amateurs by winning the Michigan State Championships and Regional Championships every year from 1992 through 2000. His first national title came in 1999, and he made his professional debut as a cruiserweight in 2001 against Mike White. After attaining the WBC Youth World Cruiserweight title, he moved up to heavyweight. Pause for a second. So I know, it gets convoluted with the WBC. They've got a billion belts. The WBC Youth title is pretty much a title that they hand out to young guys that are upcoming, that are looking great, that is supposed to be the next prospect, the next best thing. So that's what he won. Um, after he won that title, he did move up to heavyweight. During his heavyweight run, he got caught with at least a minimum, because it's very vague on how much he actually got caught with, of 1,000 grams, a.k.a. a key, a.k.a. a kilogram, a.k.a. 2.2 pounds, all the way up to Tony Montana-style 35 pounds of cocaine in California and was charged with intent to sell. He was facing 12 to 30 years. That's a long time. That's your whole life. Um, he was released from jail on bond where he took a fight with James Tony, the same James Tony that just knocked out Evander Holyfield to win all of his world titles at heavyweight. Um, the heavyweight bout went to decision. After his fight with James Tony, he started his prison sentence in on excuse me on September twenty third, two thousand and four and made his return to professional boxing on February 2nd, 2018. He now holds a record of 26-3 and three with 13 knockouts. His last fight was against Pulev. The reason why I'm bringing him up is, this is one of them guys that you have to ask, how good could he have been? Now, he has three losses, as I mentioned. The only loss he had before he went to jail was against James Toney. Rydell Booker has been on record stating that he really didn't have the best training camp for that fight. He had a lot of stresses going on. He was about to go to jail. And the only reason why he took the fight was because he needed money to pay his legal fees. As I mentioned earlier, he was facing 12 to 30 years. So it's understandable that he would take the, the fight to pay the lawyers whatever they needed to be paid, which turned out for his best benefit because he did not spend 30 years in prison. He spent around... 13 to 14 years. So there's that aspect there. Then when he comes back from boxing, he has two losses, all right? Both the losses he had against the guys he fought, he did not lose in bad fashion. In other words, he looked very good in his losses. You had, as I said, Jermaine Franklin, who he made look bad even though he lost. And his last loss was to Pula, who he made look bad. And again, that was to pull if he may look bad, who's a number one contender who was about to fight Anthony Joshua for a title, and he made him look bad. My point is, this man was away from boxing for 14 years, just about. Just about 14 years. And he comes back to go on a run and loses against a young up-and-coming who's looking good prospect and loses against a top contender in Pula, and both times he lost, he made them look bad after a 14-year gap in his career. His only loss, as I mentioned earlier a couple of times now, was to James Tony, which he took on short notice just for money because of what he was facing. Rydell Booker could have been an all-time great. With him showing as much heart in, in, in being so competitive against these guys, a young prospect and a number one guy, only speaks leagues and bounds to how good he could have been. Unfortunately, he got involved with drugs and it ruined his career. But I just wanted to put this video out there to say that Rydell Booker may never go down as an all-time great. He may never go down in the Hall of Fame. He may 
never be mentioned in the history as people look back through boxing. But I'm telling y'all this right now. Rydell Booker could have been one of the greatest. And unfortunately for him, he went to prison and missed his prime years of boxing. But how competitive he is against good guys today, especially Pulev, I believe he was either 38 or he might have just turned 39 at the time. How competitive he was against him after all that time away only reinforces how good he might have been. And it's unfortunate. So Rydell Booker, I made this as a tribute to you. If I could edit real good in Photoshop, I'd have put videos of highlights of you from the past. I can't, but I just did this for a tribute for this fighter because I think he's an amazing talent. And I think everybody would have known his name had he never went to prison. Thank y'all for watching. Hit up the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. This is my first time I've ever done a what could have been video. So if y'all like it, maybe I'll find other fighters to do it about as well.